Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us today for uh, for this uh, webinar on promoting intercultural understanding with Rashida Sadiq. Uh, this is the first webinar of a series uh, with a group of female teachers who have been working since August last year to um, yeah, really work on the webinar presentation skills, but also developing teaching materials and teaching yeah. tips for uh, teaching the traffic website. Um, so Rashida will be presenting webinar today, and uh, we have a series. We have a few, more, you know, webinars next week and uh, and next month. So without uh, further ado, I would just like to um, leave the floor to to Stephen, who has been supporting uh, Rashida and the other uh, participants to really work on uh, these lesson plans. We'll be working on uh, different themes, um, including um, multilingualism cultural understanding, uh, but also gender and grammar. Uh, so Stephen, would you like to uh, say a bit more about the project before uh, we give the floor to, to, uh, to Rashida to start the presentation? Thank you. Sure. Th thanks for that, Steve. Um, nice to meet all of you. Um, and thank you all um, for coming today to um, Rashida's um, webinar. Um, as, as Steve said, um, um, I've been working um, with a group of, of female teachers um, since August last year. Um, the project um, is called Female Voices, um, and the aim was to um, support a group of um, female teachers um, to share materials, resources, uh, and their expertise um, with teachers uh, on the, the Teaching English Africa website uh, and through webinars. So, Part of that was about learning how to design the materials effectively uh, and also um, deliver webinars um, as well. Um, so, yeah, as Steve said, this is the first of a series of webinars that we're going to be running. Um, so today is on intercultural understanding. We will also be running webinars on multilingualism, gender uh, and teaching grammar as well. So please, um, it'd be great if you could all um, join and support and the teachers on this project, um, and I hope today um, is really um, engaging um, and useful for you. Okay, and um, so um, I'll stop talking now um, and, and hand you over to um, Rashida, um, who is going to um, um, talk you through a, a very, very interesting um, topic, um, intercultural understanding. Um, I learned a lot doing this um, with Rashida as well. Um, so, um, Rashida, all, all over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you, Steve. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I can see some names in the chats. Welcome. I'm seeing someone from Ethiopia, Tesfaye. Welcome, Rita from Nigeria, Faith, Nigeria. So it's really nice that we have people from a lot of countries in Africa joining us because we all have our various cultures. Before we move on, I'd like to just look at some of the housekeeping items. Please use your use the Q&A for your chats. Do not unmute your microphone while the presentation is going on. Also, certificates of attendance will be available and Steve will probably be telling us more about that by the time we come to the end. We also do have recordings of the webinar that would be available 24 to 48 hours after we're done. All right, so this is me, Rashida Sadiq. I'm a teacher, teacher trainer, storyteller, author, uh, classroom action researcher, and now a materials writer. So it's really nice to have all these aspects of me and I keep growing. Thank you, British Council, for your assistance in this regard. I live and work in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria. I'm passionate about literacy and I run uh, an NGO that is a mobile library. I'm really interested in intercultural understanding and promoting it because I'm an individual that grew up in a very multicultural setting. So I have my Nigerian Yoruba culture. I have my Muslim Islamic culture. I also was fortunate to spend some time in the West. So I had to find a way you know, to harmonize all of this. And apart from that, Nigeria being a very multicultural society, I've lived in the West, I've lived in the South, and now I'm living in the North. So 
we have to find ways that make it easier for us as individuals and as teachers to really promote intercultural understanding. And I hope by the end of today's session, you would have been able to join me, you know, to get a good grasp of what intercultural understanding is, to increase your knowledge on the importance and benefits of intercultural understanding, especially in the classroom. I know most of us here are teachers, but even as parents, as individuals, we are all going to benefit from having good intercultural understanding. We're gonna look at some strategies that we can use in the classroom to integrate intercultural understanding while not taking away you know, from our teaching time because sometimes we see these things and we're thinking, oh, something else for me to add on. It's not really an add-on. We want to see how we can integrate some of these materials while still maintaining our standards and following the curriculum. We're gonna look at some of the practical activities that I designed while I was on the session with the female voices regarding promoting intercultural understanding. All right, so what is intercultural awareness? Now I want you to share your voice. I'd like you to please find time to go to Mentimeter, uh, menti.com and enter the code that is shown or if you have your phone, you can just scan the QR code and it should take you a page to a page where you get to share some of the words that come to your mind when you hear the term intercultural understanding. So I'm going to be putting the code in the chats while I go over to the page so that we can see some of the words that people are sharing. Yeah. I'll put the code for you. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, if you, you just mind uh, sharing the screen, but I actually didn't see the code. I'm just typing. Sorry. What is it? You what haven't gotten it. Yet. Okay, so uh, the code, I'm going to call it out, Steve. Is that okay? Sure, it's fine. 7121 2633. Thanks. So I'll just put Thank it in the you. chat. Uh, All right. The, the, uh, yeah. the website, so you can actually go um, access it. So I'm hoping that you're already putting your words in. Some people are actually asking for the QR code. Maybe they prefer to have the QR code if you don't mind just sharing again. Okay. All right. Let me quickly do that. Okay. So, yeah, that's the QR code. I'm getting some words already. I'm seeing empathy, listening, connection open-mindedness. Uh, I will be sharing the screen now for us to see it. Please do put in more words. Let's see how much we can build our word cloud. Okay, are you asking a question? So we have some more words here, curiosity, different perspectives, thank you. Ethnicity, embracing differences, thank you. Humanity, teamwork, unbiased, diversity. I'm also seeing some in the chat, thank you. Okay. Tolerance, very important one. Thank you. Thank you. Understanding. Yes. Coexisting. All right. So we're going to move on, but please, you can continue to put in your words in the mentee and we will be able to access that later. Thank you very much. Okay. So here are some definitions 
Uh, now, please mute your microphone uh, for the duration of the session. I'd like us to read the definitions and in your opinion, tell us in the chats which one you think is the best definition or that encompasses it. So I'm also going to be reading through. So the first one says that intercultural understanding is a combination of knowledge about other cultures at a cognitive level combined with a set of attitudes at the affective level. So this is um, teacher speak. What it just means is that we have the knowledge of the different cultures, but not just stopping at the knowledge, we behave in accordance to our knowledge. We are aware of other cultures and we relate with the other people in a way that shows that empathy and listening that some of us talked about, that coexisting. The second one says, an in informed problem solving and social action activities that necessitate an appreciation of the full range of issues, including the values and beliefs of everyone involved. So this is telling us that not only are we talking about values and beliefs and actions, it's a wide range of things. Intercultural understanding is not just about some aspects of culture. And it's not just about two cultures or three cultures. It's about everybody involved. And it might even be within the same culture, but you have some differences. The third definition says a developmental experience, sorry, a developmental experiential process that involves both engagement with other cultures and engagement with an understanding of self. So this particular definition tells us that you need to understand your own self and your own culture, and then proceed to try to understand other cultures. And the beautiful word that I like here is the word process. In intercultural understanding doesn't just happen you know, at once. You can't say, oh, I understand all cultures. It's a process. You keep growing the more you interact with other people. And the last definition says a deep exploration of our personal and cultural values and the experiential development of respect and compassion for the rights of others translated into positive action. So this also goes into your personal values and others' values and then translating it into positive action, not just knowing about the different cultures, but being able to really interact with others. So I'm seeing the chats, um, a number of us, a liking D, someone says C, <laughs> Okoye says B and C, okay, you are allowed to choose two. Uh, yeah, someone says all those combined. Yes, why, why can't we take all of them together? So there is no right or wrong answer. It's just what suits you better. And then really, if you do take all of them together, you have a more holistic view. So I have a lot of number people with D. All right. So we're doing well. Thank you very much. We're moving on. Thank you all for your participation. I really appreciate it. So what exactly does culture entail? We've talked about the fact that it's a process. We've talked about the fact that it's values, it's beliefs. It's not only things like language. It's not only things like dressing. So here I have a list of different aspects of culture. And I'd like us to try to categorize these things into A, things that are apparent, and S, things that are submerged. So the way culture works, the part that we see, the dressing, the language, the appearance, it's actually just a small tip of the iceberg. There's a submerged version of the submerged aspects that are really much more. So let's have a look. As I start reading, try to see if you can classify which of these are really apparent for everyone to see, and which of these are submerged and you need to move closer and get a better awareness and understanding to be aware of them. So we have physical. So here we're talking about dances. We're talking about the clothes we wear. We're talking about the food we eat. These are things we can see, we can touch, the things we do, the way we eat, the way we carry out our daily activities. Then we have the intellectual. These are the traditional knowledge, diverse ways of knowing. So. In each culture, there are different ways of thinking. Um, I was watching a documentary and it says something around the fact that people that live in the Pacific Islands, they see time 
in a different way from the way we see time. Now that's something that is, you know, everybody thinks time is time, but depending on your culture, you are going to see things differently. In some cultures, we have just fewer tenses. English, we have the past perfect, future present. You know, we have so many uh, different tenses. In some, in some cultures, they have only two or three ten tenses. We have past, present and future you know so all of these things are things that you don't apparently see but they're the way that knowledge is transferred we also have the emotional diverse ways of expressing grief now in some cultures you're not allowed to cry when you lose someone and in other cultures it's expected if you don't cry people are going to be worried so this emotional aspect of culture is that apparent or submerged let me have a quick look at the chats before I go on. Okay, people are already putting in their groups. Somebody says social and spiritual are apparent. Somebody says political is apparent. Hmm. All right, good. I'm going to go on just trying to have a look at the different aspects. And please continue with whatever you think is apparent or submerged in the chats. Spiritual or religious practices and beliefs. So sometimes these are, these are things that we see the way we worship, the temples we go to, the things we do. Aesthetic, art, music, dance, the concept of beauty. Are these apparent? Linguistic, our languages, are they apparent? Social issues, issues around human rights, discrimination, are they apparent? Political systems, is it a chieftaincy? Is it a serfdom? Is it a kingdom? Is it a democracy? Are these apparent or are they submerged? historical issues, history of migration, history of colonization, all of these conflicts, what do you think? Are they things that are easy to see or do we need to dig deeper to have a better understanding? Power relations, minority groups, do we easily see this or do we need to go closer to the culture to really be aware of this? And then the ethical values of each culture, are they easy to see what values that and beliefs that cultures have. All right, thank you so much. I'm getting really good um, feedback here. Someone says history is apparent. Someone says spiritual is submerged. All right, thank you. Okay, so I did a quick uh, classification of my own and I have physical as apparent. We can all see the clothing. We can see the food. Intellectual, we can't necessarily see. Unless we get closer, we are not going to really understand how a culture thinks, how they reason, their driving force. Spiritual has two aspects because there are the, the physical rituals of religion that we can see, but there's also the submerged, the faith that you can't really see. Aesthetic, the beauty, paintings, um, decorations, these are things that we can easily see. The emotional is in invisible or submerged. Linguistic, we can hear the language, it's physical. If you hear someone speaking a language, sometimes you are, you know, oh, that's Chinese, that's Korean. Sometimes you, you're not sure, but at least you know, oh, this is a foreign language, I need to know more. Social is also not always visible. Political is visible. We can see the ruling systems. Historical, well, may not be visible, but sometimes in some cultures, you actually have artifacts that show you, you know, the history. But things around migration patterns are not things that you necessarily can see, but you can find out about it in books or through the oral literature. Ethical and moral issues um, also have the apparent aspects where, you know, in some cultures, everyone knows that um, part of their own morals, for example, the Yoruba culture, is it's considered good morals to kneel down to Greeks. It's considered good morals in um, China, for example, to bow, to show respect. However, there are some other ethical issues around honesty, around respecting the elders that are not so clear, that are more submerged or invisible yes thank you for your comments in the chats please keep them coming all right so we're moving on why do you think intercultural understanding is important i want to see the chats yeah thank you it is a very important topic so why elizabeth can you share why
Okay, someone says it helps integration from respect, mutual respect. Yes, thank you. It brings people from different diversities together. It helps us to be able to live together. Perspective promotes social cohesion. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, for us to be able to show tolerance, to be able to live together. Peace, yes, for peace and harmony, beautiful tolerance, appreciation for differences, promotes communication, very important one. Yes, breaks down stereotypes, thank you. All right, better understanding of each other, social interaction, promotes unity, yes. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Intercultural understanding is important for so many things. And I will just give some like a little story around something that happened in my childhood it's not going to be exact but here we are as nigerians we find it a taboo to hand anybody anything with the left hand you have to hand things with your right hand it shows disrespect and normally the left hand is used for using the toilet and things like that now when we were younger, there were children that were left-handed and whenever they either mistakenly or unknowingly tried to hand things with their left hand, they were deemed to be disrespectful. They were told that they were raised right, you know? So now who was at fault? Is it the child that didn't understand that he's not supposed to use his right hand? Or is it the adult that didn't understand that this child is left-handed? For us in Africa, I know, or in Nigeria, let me be specific, I know that we've gotten to the stage where we allow the children to use their dominant hand in school, but we tell them that if you want to eat, try to use your right hand. If you want to hand things to people, try to use your right hand. So we're trying to reach a balance. And that's because we're, we're trying to put intercultural understanding in perspective. Oh, interesting. It says here that in some cultures in Yoruba land, a left-handed person cannot be king. I'm a Yoruba person and I didn't know that. But that just shows us the importance of some of the values that each culture has to what they do in life. Excellent. All right. So I have gotten a good number of why we believe that intercultural understanding is important. And all of these are very pertinent. Yes. Thank you. All right. So here are some of the points that I got. And some of them have already been mentioned in the chats. So the first one is that it's in the classroom generally, as teachers, if we're able to promote intercultural understanding, it helps us to create an inclusive and welcome class environment. A lot of countries in Africa have many tribes, have many ethnicities. So it's likely that you're gonna have a child from another tribe, another region, another culture in your classroom. So if you can have activities that promote intercultural understanding in the class, everybody feels welcome. It also goes further, you know, when we're done with school and we are we, we graduate into the workforce, we're able to interact better with others. So somebody talked about social cohesion in the chats. It helps us with our communication. We're better able to collaborate and negotiate with others because we're not we we avoid stereotypes. We know that there are other cultures. We try to understand things from other perspectives, and then we can come to a middle course in our negotiation. Mommy. Intercultural understanding also enables mutual respect and peaceful coexistence. So we move away from just tolerating each other. I know in the chats I saw tolerance, and yes, that's a key component, but we move away from just tolerating and just, you know, when you're tolerating, you're just like, okay, I'm not comfortable with it, but I'm not going to complain to a place where we're actually happy, even if we don't agree to live peacefully and allow the other person to enjoy their life, you know? So people did mention in the chats also about peaceful coexistence and mutual respect. Another beautiful thing that intercultural understanding does for us is to is conflict resolution. There will always be conflict. Even in a multicultural society, conflict will arise. But if we're open and we have been able to step into understanding different cultures, it'll be easier to 
address and resolve any conflicts that arise. Also, intercultural understanding creates responsible global citizens. The world is moving away from me and my village. The world is now a global village. So we need to make sure that we entrench intercultural understanding in the classroom so that we're providing our learners with opportunities that make them better global citizens in the future. It also engenders empathy. If you are able to have an idea of other people's cultures, you're able to have a sense of how they may feel, especially when we're talking about marginalization, we're looking at minorities. Human beings tend to have a very self-centered outlook. But if you're able to integrate intercultural understanding in the classroom, you're building empathetic citizens that can better live in the world with others. It also facilitates interconnectedness and worldwide cooperation. So we are moving to a situation where we are having projects with people across the world. We as Africans need to spread our wings. If we have intercultural understanding, if we've been able to integrate this in our classes and our learners have made it part and parcel of themselves, then they can interact with children in China, they can work with somebody in India, and it's not gonna be a problem. Because um, a lot of us as Africans, we have that fear of the unknown. Oh, I hear that in China, they do this. Or I hear that in India, they, they eat snakes. You know, people just have funny things. And that's the same way they also hear that in Africa, where, you know, strolling around the jungles with the lions. All right. So now I want to bring it down to the English classroom. What are some of the specific benefits that promoting or integrating intercultural understanding can give us in our classroom. The first one is improved communication skills. Somebody mentioned that already, and not just the verbal communication, even the body language, the nuances, the context. So now a lot of, um, we're, we're hearing the concept of Englishes because a lot of different cultures have domesticated English, you know, and change it to suit their own culture. I know in Nigeria, we have some of some English words we use and someone in England would just not understand what we're saying. That's by the fact that we, it's in English because we brought it into our own context. We've taken ownership of it. But if you have, you know, intercultural understanding, you will be patient enough to try to understand, okay, what is this person? What does this person mean? Yes, they're speaking English, but this doesn't make sense in my context. What could it possibly mean? And you're open you know, to learning more. You're a better communicator. And a lot of us are teaching English to speakers of other languages. We need to help them. You know, it used to be, okay, where they're learning English culture as they're learning English language. Now it's not just that monoculture. We're also learning other cultures as we're learning English language because English is now used to interact almost globally. So we have to promote intercultural understanding. Intercultural yeah. understanding, in my opinion, also enhances metacognition. And what is metacognition? Some people say it's thinking about thinking. It helps you to reflect on your own thinking, on your thought processes, on the decisions that you make. If you are able to be aware of your own culture, which is part of what we said in the part of intercultural understanding, and then you go further to be aware of other people's cultures before you make decisions, before you write stories, before you present in your English classroom, you're going to think from different perspectives and you're gonna be able to think, okay, if I was in, from this culture, how would I approach this? You know, these are some of the benefits of, in, introducing intercultural understanding in the English classroom. It also helps us with our reflection. So while you're writing a piece or an article or you're asking your learners to write an article, they need to be able to look at it as, okay, is this article okay for everybody? Are you stereotyping or are you biased against any particular culture? So it helps you to take a balanced view and to reflect not only on your writing or on your work, but this is also able to move into other aspects of your life. But of course, we're talking about the learning now. Your writing is gonna be better because you're gonna be able to give a balanced point of view. You're gonna give 
the arguments for and against. They're going to reflect on why you wrote those things. Are they valid for all situations? What are the different possible contexts? Intercultural understanding promotes you think more about the things you do because you're thinking, okay, how is this related to other cultures? And am I being open enough? And finally, also re related to the nuances we talked about earlier, you're aware of the implication of nonverbal communication. And um, part of what I was researching, a lot of us knew that a thumbs up is a good sign, but I heard that there's a particular culture where they see thumbs up as a rude sign, you know? so. We have to be aware of, okay, what is okay? Um, in some cultures in Nigeria, if you show your palm face someone, they see it as an insult. While in other cultures, it's just like a hi or a bye. So if you're aware, you will know, you know how to apply some of these cult cultures. Yes, Sene, thank you. Enhances comprehension of the context, it does. It helps to generate innovative ideas. It helps us to accept ourselves and to accept others, promotes participative learning. Thank you, thank you for all these beautiful ideas. We move from self-centeredness to other-centeredness. I really love that. Um, yes. All right, so I'm hoping that by now we are convinced that we need to try to integrate intercultural understanding in our classroom, the benefits, the importance. There are some components of intercultural understanding and this was propounded by Byram. He talked about his five savoirs. Now they were written in French, but I tried to have a rough translation or adaptation and it's just the components. And we've looked at some of them before. The first one is knowledge and the knowledge is knowledge of self, and knowledge of others. So you need to be aware of who you are. Some of us actually don't have a good knowledge of our culture. When I became a storyteller, I wanted to tell stories from my culture, from Yoruba culture. And I just realized that I had forgotten most of the stories that I was told as a child. I could remember some of the songs or the chants in the stories, but I had forgotten. So we need to connect with our own culture. We need to make it a part of us. We need to help the learners to connect with their own culture. And then we need to extend that to having knowledge of other people's cultures. And we already talked about the different aspect, the physical, the linguistic, and all of that. The second one is what we call at the bottom here, savoir être, and that has to do with our attitudes. So yes, we've known, we've gotten the knowledge about our culture and other cultures. How do we translate this knowledge into a welcoming at attitude, into empathy, into behaving in a way that is warm and accepting of other cultures. We also have savoir compound that is eliciting meaning, trying to really understand some of the culture. So yes, we know the culture. Let's try to understand the underpinnings, not just the surface knowledge. If we understand why some people do some things, it'll be easier for us to be accepting. And the last one are the skills, savoir faire, that we use to interact with others, that we use to negotiate with others. And all of these are supposed to culminate in what we call intercultural engagement. And the literature says, this is where you've advanced to a level where you are a real global citizen. You're fighting for the causes of other cultures. You are not just staying in your own small space. You're reaching out to other people all over the world. All right, so here I have another little task for us. We have five stages of intercultural understanding, and I'd like us to try to arrange these stages in the order that they come. So here, intercultural fluency, intercultural awareness, intercultural competence, cross-cultural contact, and intercultural sensitivity. Which one do you think comes first on the hierarchical order? Yeah, I'd love to see your responses in the chats. Okay, someone says awareness is the first one. All right. Thank you, Phoebe. I want to see some more. What's for, what's next? Okay, I, Esther also says awareness. Uh, I'm seeing cross-cultural fluency. 
Okay, many people are saying awareness. All right. So what comes after awareness? Intercultural contact. Okay. So, yeah. So most people say awareness comes first. Somebody says intellectual sensitivity is next. Contact, fluency. Sensitivity comes after awareness. Okay. Competence. DB says competence is second. Ah, yes. So if you are not aware, you can't be fluent. So I think we're almost all agreeing that awareness is first. Let's see. Okay. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you, Henrietta. Okay. Nasira says fluency is last. Daniel says awareness is first. Sensitivity. Mercy, what number is that? Is that two? Awareness, then contact. Thank you, Lawrence. Cross-cultural contact. Okay. Elizabeth says intellectual fluency is last. Sensitivity is last. Wow, we have a wide range here. Okay, thank you, thank you. I love how you're all interacting in the chats. I appreciate it. Okay, let's look at what I have. All right. So awareness is the first. And I think we were all really on that. Like you can't do much if you're not aware. And then we have cross-cultural contact. So once you're aware, then you start to interact with other people from other cultures. Then you are able to develop intercultural sensitivity and then you become fluent and then you attain competence. So we're gonna have a look at what each of these stages really mean. Okay, so the first one, intercultural awareness is awareness of our own cultural identities our values beliefs and acceptance knowledge and acceptance of others cultures right and we already looked at four other um interrelated concepts then we have cross-cultural contact interaction between people with different cultures developing a positive emotion towards appreciating cultural differences and promoting an appropriate behavior then we have Fluency being the ability to successfully operate and communicate within different cultural contexts. Fluency is not always as easy as it seems because sometimes we are bogged down by our own biases, by our own history. So it takes practice, it takes time. Just like with reading fluency, just like with speaking fluency, it's something that we need to exercise our intercultural fluency muscles. And how can we do that? Let's find people from other cultures to interact with. And finally, we have the intercultural competence, which is a measure of one's efficacy at communicating and interacting with people from a variety of backgrounds, cultures, and identities. So that is the pinnacle, what we want to achieve. But of course, I did mention earlier that it's all a process. You can't say, oh, I have I have become perfect because you might come across a new culture that you are not really familiar with in future. Just keep on with the cycle. Make sure you're aware, interact with people, develop that sensitivity and show the correct attitudes. Okay, so how can we promote intercultural understanding? This is a very beautiful picture of my humble self. Uh, and I, I think I did mention that I'm Yoruba by tribe. But in this picture, I decided to try to step in to the evil culture. And I really had fun doing that. So what are some things that you have done or you think we can do as teachers to promote intercultural understanding in the classroom and in the school? Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you, Khamis. Okay, thank you all. Don't let's talk about the picture anymore. What? How can we promote intercultural understanding? Okay, somebody says promoting dress code, having a cultural day, intercultural education, inclusivity. Right. Cultural day, yes, yes. Okay. Appreciate your learners' names. Thank you. International language day. Good. Talk show. Talk show, can you expatiate on that? What do you mean by talk show? Dramas, yes. Acting and drama is always a very good way to portray other cultures. Songs, thank you. Just showing respect for other cultures, yes. Learning about the other cultures. Integration in teaching, role play, yes, yes. Attending cultural events, book week, yes. Good. Debates, good. Nat National Cultural Day, something that's coming up. 
accommodation. I'm not sure what you mean, including it in the curriculum, poems from other culture. Yes, fostering cultural exchange. Very good. Exchanging, um, you know, students exchange, exchanging emails. Excellent. Value other cultures. Thank you. Thank you. Social studies. Focusing on cultural diversity, exchange programs, yeah. Poetry, dancing, singing, modeling, other cultures, roundtable discussions. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm sure you look beautiful in the costume. Okay, cultural awareness, creative and cultural arts, accommodating each other's cultures, language exchange programs. These are really beautiful ideas. Thank you. And you can keep them coming. We're here to learn from each other. So here are some of the strategies that I propose. First of all, and I think it was mentioned in the chats, model respect for other cultures. As a teacher, let your learners see you showing respect for other cultures. Don't be that teacher that will look down on a particular culture or talk down or talk negatively or just generalize on, oh, those Yoruba people are this those Ethiopian people are that. that. That is not something that should come from any teacher anywhere in the world. Let's diversify our curriculums to include multicultural elements. All right, let's celebrate diversity, encourage learners to express themselves, to bring their different local foods to school, to dress in their different traditional attires. Make sure you create a safe and judgment-free zone. So once they're coming in, make them feel welcome, show curiosity, let other members of the class know that they're not allowed to make fun of anyone because of their culture. Rather, they're supposed to appreciate the culture and the beauty within that culture, promote inclusion and acceptance of differences. Invite others from other cultures to come to your classroom to discuss topics. So you can have professionals, doctors, nurses, but from different cultures. So here the learners see that, oh, this person, even though he's a minority, he's just like I am. Uh, the Chinese man can be a doctor just like I can be. The Hausa man can be a, an engineer, you know. So yes, they're coming in to talk about professions, but they're also seeing the other cultural aspects of whoever is coming in. Organize cultural days. I think a number of us put that in the chats. In monocultural settings, you can actually assign different cultures to different groups. But if it's... um you know, a heterogeneous group, each person can represent their own culture. If you have a mix of cultures in the classroom, introduce diverse literature. Somebody talked about book week, introduce books, articles, blogs from different parts of the world, translated material, but from other cultures into your classroom. Use these as reading and study materials. This structural materials from various cultures. So you can have realia from different cultures, have um, a calabash. You're talking about crockery, but you bring in the China, you bring in the calabash, you bring in the different things that people used to eat from different aspects of the world. Organize class trips. Somebody talked about exchange programs, lies with teachers from other parts of the world. Have discussions where you explore these stereotypes. Have those difficult discussions, but in a safe zone, in a safe space. Some of us may be thinking of, oh, this is too difficult. People complain they don't have enough time. We've talked about integrating it into the normal things that we do so that we don't go too far out of what we're supposed to do. Some people talk about not having access to materials and resources, but the internet is an awesome place. And now we have some materials even on the Teaching Africa, Teaching English Africa website that you can look into. Um, some people also talk about how do you assess intercultural understanding. Now, it depends on if that's what you really want to do or you want to assess the aspect of English language teaching. There is a model for assessing intercultural understanding if we want to do that. And then, of course, there's the issue of teacher knowledge. Is the teacher actually aware? Does the teacher have intercultural understanding? That's why we're doing webinars like this to spread the knowledge, share your knowledge with others around you. And then there's the issue of continuity. If you introduce intercultural understanding, are, is the person teaching after you're going to do the same? So let's try starting our classrooms and introduce it to other people within our teaching context. Okay, so here, 
we're going to go into some of the activities that I designed as part of my material writing for promoting intercultural understanding. The first one is called Exchange Student. Now, we may not be able to physically bring in a student, but it's sort of like a role play or a scenario. And you start by getting different images and you get the learners to identify where the images are from, which culture. So we're gonna quickly try to do that. I have five pictures and five nationalities. So can you match the picture in the chats to the nationality? Okay, someone says the last one is Kenya E. C, Indian. Kenya for Indonesian, yes, A. E, Kenyan. C, Indian. Colombia B. Aside from Kenya, yes, Indian. All right, I think we're doing well. A Peru. Okay, so I'm going to tell us the correct answers because there are some people not really getting it. So A is Indonesian. These are two little Indonesian children. B is Peru. C is Indian. D is Colombian. And E is Kenyan. All right, well done. So that's something we can do to introduce the concept in our classroom. And then we get on to give the students and tell them that, okay, your exchange student is from Indonesia. Your exchange student is from Kenya. Now I want you to draft questions that you're going to ask your exchange student. And the learners can either work individually or in groups to ask different questions, things that they're curious about, about other cultures. So we have some sample questions here. What is your national dish? What do you do during your weddings? So the objective is for them to show curiosity and to learn to craft questions. And then when we're done with this, the teacher models the answering. So the children ask the teacher the question and you model the response. And then you can pair your learners based on their cultures to also answer the questions that were crafted. In some instances, if you don't want to use the learner's cultures, you can have them research the cultures ahead so that they're answering from a different culture. But the key component here is showing curiosity about cultures, asking questions, and then sharing knowledge about different cultures. The second activity is what I call the story swap and storytelling and role play are just beautiful ways to integrate intercultural understanding. So you start off by teaching any words that they may not know in the story that you wanna tell. And then you tell a popular folktale from your culture as the teacher. So while the te learners are listening, they're taking down notes. And sometimes you can also ask learners questions to make sure that they can understand. You monitor their comprehension. When they're done with that, you pair them or group them to retell your story to each other. So here they're learning the folktale and then they're practicing their speaking. They're practicing story structure. You can also go ahead to highlight, you know, the specifics or features of a folktale. The fact that it has a simple plot, it normally highlights moral values, may or may not include magic and mythical creatures. The next stage is about exploring the story structure. Tell them that a normal story would have that Story Mountain that we, we call that sometimes the beginning, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, and the resolution. Another aspect of English that you can look into with the story swap is the grammar in context. You've told the story and narratives are normally told in past tense. You tell them to identify all the past tense words in that story, either from a written text or as they're listening, they're writing down the past tense for you. Next, you go on to having them share their own folk tales that they've learned from their own parents and their own cultures with their partners, and then they swap stories. So this helps us to build empathy. If you're telling a story from another culture, you get to 
better appreciation of that culture. All right. So finally, you can do many other things related to the story swap. You can decide to talk about the lessons from the various stories. You can even have a writing activity where they get to write out the lessons from different cultures that they learned or to write out their favorite story that they heard from their classmates. So that's story swap. And there are various um, ways that we can adapt that. All right, so here we have a third activity. So please, if you can, use the QR code to assess the activity. Or you go to, I'm gonna put a link in the chats that would also lead us to the activity. So this activity is some is one that helps discussion. It one it's like a scenario. I don't know if anybody has been able to access it from the from the QR code. So I'm going to try to share the activity. We may not be able to go too far, but I'd like you to type up in the chats, you know, what you would what you would do in the different scenarios. I'm going to be sharing the screen. So if you haven't been able to get to it, it's fine. You can have a look at it later, but I'm sharing it here. So it's called intercultural understanding problem solving. So we're going to have a look at the first problem. So the first problem says, you like using chopsticks to eat, but the school makes it compulsory to use a fork and a knife when eating in the cafeteria. How do you react? So I'd like to hear your views in the chats. What should a student like this feel, do? Somebody says it's sad. Okay, do you just feel sad? Somebody says go with the rules. All right. Somebody says adapt. <laughs> okay, um, someone is asking what the link is for. Don't worry about it. Just follow us on this. I've shared the I've shared the page. Try to respect the rules. You should learn to adapt. Someone says I will tell the teacher. I think I like that because it's a different perspective. I will tell the teacher to teach me how to use the fork and knife. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anyone that is going to advise the student to maybe write to the school to permit him or her to use chopsticks. Okay. Someone says, speak to the in charge. <laughs> Someone says, keep practicing. You're going to get used to it. Okay. So as part of interact intercultural understanding, someone says, try to appreciate the use of a fork and knife. So move away from what you're used to and learn something new. Mm. Someone says adapt, learn from other learners. Okay, okay. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. I'm gonna share another scenario. All right. You like to keep your hair in an Afro, but many classmates complain that it doesn't look neat. How do you react? So most of the classmates, I guess, may not be Africans or maybe they may be, they just feel that it's not. Okay, someone says ignore them. All right, thank you, Kevita. Okay, uh, I don't really know what you how you want us to familiarize ourselves, Eskinda. Um, do we tell them? Okay, someone says create awareness, explain the importance of the haircut, be yourself. So don't don't be bothered. Tell them why you have the afro, why you prefer the afro. Okay, proudly explain your culture. Explain, explain. I like that idea. <laughs> someone says cover it up. Okay, I'm not sure we should be bowing to pressure from our classmates explain, be yourself. But um, these are just to let us know that a lot of things happen in the classroom. And it's easy to say, just adapt and go with the flow. But it, it's these are things that limit us. And if we're not careful, make our own classrooms less inclusive. So not everybody feels comfortable within the class if they're not accepted. 
All right. Someone says change and be like them. Cut your hair. Tell them the importance. So we have a wide variety of um what people would do. Someone, you know, some of us are willing to just conform while others feel it's it's good to try to explain what we do and why we do it, especially if it's part of our culture or part of our religious culture, part of our um, local culture. All right. So as teachers, and especially as Africans, I know we are very used to conforming. And that's why I'm having a lot of us talking about, oh, adapt, conform. But how do we plan to make the classroom more comfortable for, for different people. So as a teacher, what can you do for that child that is feeling left out or that child that is feeling mocked because of their hairstyle or because of how they eat or because of what they wear? So th this is a question I want us to take away. What can you do as a teacher to help such learners? How can you promote intercultural understanding so your learners are willing to accept different cultures so it's been awesome with you we've almost come to the end uh have a few minutes for questions if you have any questions please put them in the chats uh steve and steven please help me monitor if i have any questions okay sensitize the classmates teach the students the importance of respecting other people's cultures thank you thank you thank you very much all right everyone um, is unique yeah, we'll potentially um, uh, give time for one or two questions. Uh, so if you'd like to, if, if you'd like to ask a question, please please raise your hand and uh, we'll, we'll give you the floor. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I do appreciate and it's been lovely being with you. I like the fact that you were also interactive throughout the presentation. Bye. If you have, yes, hi, hi, go ahead, please. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum My name is Asan Takaut. I joined very late. Sorry about that. Please, can you review the um, class again by sending a link so that I can go through it, please? Okay, so there will be a recording that would be sent to, I think, everybody that uh, registered. Then it's also normally available on the Teaching English Africa website. Uh, you have the history of all past uh, website webinars will be there for access. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I believe the slides will also be put on the websites. Uh, Steve, is that correct? Yes. Thank yes, you, Dr. Baluk. All right. Oh, thank you. I'm seeing friends and family here. It's awesome to have all of you with me and I'm happy we've been able to share. Uh, okay, so I believe we don't have any questions. Yeah, I haven't seen actually, any. No, 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 no questions. So yeah, I think I think that's, that's yes, there was plenty to, to learn from you today. Uh, and uh, we thank everyone for uh, for making it, uh, for joining uh, this, uh, this session. Uh, so just a reminder, Sorry, uh, is anyone? I just heard someone. Do we have any other question? I have a question. Question on chat. Just that I I can't lay hold on it now. Something about um, if you were um how something about if you how would you handle with uh, cultural diverse this um, topic in relation to um rules and regulations. On the, in a school, it's on the it's on the chat. I'm trying to scroll to find out where that where that occurred. It's on the chat. okay. All right. So I uh, the chats went really quickly. I didn't see it, but I think I have an idea of what what you said. So yes, how do we handle the cultural diversity in relation to the school rules and regulations? So just like some of the discussion points we were looking at, the the school has its own rules that may not be directly related or go against some of our cultures. What do we do? So for me, I believe in interacting. Someone said, approach the in charge. There's nothing set in stone. And if a school understands the importance of accepting different cultures, you can have the parents approach the school that, you know, this is my culture. This is my religion. This is this. 
Can I be given accommodations because of this? In some instances, if you can convince the school of why you should be accommodated, that would be good. In other instances, just like people said, you may have to adapt. But I think it's more about having those conversations. We shouldn't just quietly be forced to conform. We should intellectually discuss with each other. And if it doesn't negatively impact the school running or students, allow to express your own cult uh, culture that's my point of view so but i think the bottom line is on negotiating interacting reaching out if at the end you're not allowed of course we would want everybody to abide by the rules of the school thank you for bringing that to my notice